Well, hello and welcome, you're back into Satisfactory. With your host Jim Desmond, this time we're going to check at power. This is a little general power guide to explain a little bit more in detail on how power works in Satisfactory. And this is a series, so if you're very confused, um, it's a series in many parts and we cover some things in earlier tutorials as well. Uh, we have uh, explained power briefly, but this little special episode uh, just wants to teach you in detail how, to uh, how power works. So kind of a power guide, not how to set up a certain thing, but a little guide. So here we have a little micro area. This is like um, a little mini setup. You can see we're burning biomass fuel here um, and we're burning this biomass fuel uh, and we're producing 45 megawatts and why do we produce that well uh, because that's how much the machine outputs with a 50% boost so like other machines you can boost you can overclock or underclock them and if we go down here can see oh look there now this thing kicked in we're gonna explain that a little bit more in detail so we underclock this to produce little power and in general you don't ever want to underclock um, power generating machines it doesn't make any sense um, you can over overclock power generating machines if you want them to be uh, producing more power so you can do like this and they will still be pretty efficient and produce uh, well very much more power and it will also burn fuel faster so you need to adjust the inputs of uh, well in this case biofuel in any case we are going to oh hello there we're going to check a little bit on the power pole if you go to power pole you can check up the grid here and here you can see we have a consumption of uh, 0 0.1 megawatts and that's because this thing is done so we're gonna stick in some more rods there uh, and the consumption is of course based on how much power um, our setup uses this thing um, you can see here it uh, requires 4 megawatts this thing is producing 75 megawatts this means that the burn rate of this will not be at 100% you can see it's not 10 per minute, it's moving super slow. And that is because we're not using all that power. Uh, all other machines that produce power, uh, they actually waste the, the extra excessive power that you uh, um, well, have in the system. Uh, the biomass burners, um, or the, the, the biomass burners, yeah, they are the only thing that adapts its uh, burn rate to the output. Uh, the coal generators, uh, we're going to look at that plant a little bit later. It's actually what's powering most of this, as you probably know by watching this little series. Um, yeah, but it uh, it's running at 100% all the time, uh, despite um, the biomass burners uh, also being attached to the setup. You can see over here we have some biomass burners, and they are connected up to the system, and they are not burning right now. Um, so there is kind of a little power priority thing uh, first you will have your automated power like uh, in early stages of, uh, early stages of game or like medium stages rather uh, it is the coal they have the first priority and uh, if you are not using more energy than your coal power plants produce you can see it looks like these are burning but if you go into these you can see that they are not burning anything they are full however if our coal power plant is not able to provide all the power we need well then our biofuel burners these ones they will kick in and we have uh, eight of them producing 30 megawatts each <clears throat> so basically i would recommend everyone to actually keep their uh, biomass burning power plant even though they have uh, advanced to later stages in the game you should keep them around and have them full uh, because they are working as a organic battery basically uh, when the coal power is not enough these will kick in 
we can check a little bit on the graphs here for my main power. And we can see the consumption is 100, <coughs> 1,300 megawatts and the production is 1,800 megawatts, so a lot more. Uh, then we have a uh, capacity of uh, 2,080 megawatts uh, and we have a max consumption of 1,493 megawatts. Then we have a little battery area here and we're gonna check that a little bit later. Uh, and that is our temporary power storage and this is at 100% because it is not needed. So in the power priority we first have the coal and the out other automated power generation uh, and then we have the biomass burners and if the biomass burners uh, run out uh, the batteries the stored power will have will actually kick in, kick in. So it will only be used if it has to be used and uh, otherwise it will be charged. Uh, however, biomass burners seem to not charge these. It's only like coal power plants and some excessive outputs like that. So, uh, in order to not hear the terrible sound when your power goes down, you'll need the consumption to be under, uh, well, the production. Otherwise, you'll hear this terrible sound. And uh, that means your power went down. And uh, after this little video, hopefully, uh, you will not hear that sound very often. So, uh, let me explain these numbers uh, a little bit more in detail. And we're going to uh, go back to the other facility, the little small test facility, to be able to show you this. However, I will just explain uh, that you want your lines to be pretty straight. Uh, you know we have uh, looked at how to make awesome sinks and how to be like efficient and how to just recycle everything we don't need and put them into, uh, well, uh, fix it coupons so we can buy cool things. Got a guide on buying stuff as well. So you can make your base look a little bit cooler than it uh, perhaps is doing right now. Or maybe it looks cooler than mine. Who knows? Probably it does. But in any case, um, if you recycle everything, um, most people's consumption uh, is kind of jacked, uh, like a jagged line like this. But if you recycle everything perfectly efficiently, your consumption should always be a straight line, which is what you should aim for. Make it as straight as possible. And you can check my earlier videos on like awesome sinks and stuff like that um, if you want to know how to do that. Then, well, we're gonna go back to the other facility, so it's a little bit easier to see there because that neat power structure, uh, I just recently got that when I added all the uh, awesome sinks and stuff like that. In any case, uh, here we can see that this thing has 0%. This thing is still running and this is running on its last fuel. So, um, Let's see what happens then. We're going down here. And this thing has no charge. We're going to disconnect it just. Uh, and we're going to connect it up to the main line. And this means that this thing will now be charged. You can see we have stored capacity there. We're going to disconnect it again because I only wanted to have a little power in it. And now this thing. Yeah. Oh, I need to, well, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> we need to produce some more here, so we're actually using. Um, and this is using four megawatts, but if we boost the output here, we can actually uh, control click and fill it up and just drag it up to max. And we can see now it needs um, 13 megawatts. So when you boost buildings um, with the power shards, they will be slightly less efficient and you can underclock them. Oh, see, now we stopped. So it just got stopped in a track, no power. All right, so what if we had one of these connected up? Well, it boots up like that and starts generating. And now our stored power is getting fed back into the system. We can check this here. We can see the consumption is so well, the, the only machine we have, 13.4 megawatts. The production is zero megawatts, which isn't, which isn't very good. Uh, and we just have a little stored capacity here. You can see it uh, It gives us one minute of extra power. So having some of these uh, power storages, like if you make your setup completely perfect, you don't need to have 
these power storages. But uh, chances are you're not going to make your com setup completely perfect because you're going to add more machines and more machines and more machines and then your power grid goes down. And if these are uh, have to be used, well, the game will kind of tell you that your power is actually too low and your power storages are now doing the work. And then you have like uh, probably like an hour or something like that to actually fix the issue. If we check the main grid, we can see here that we have 100 megawatts stored. So this will keep us uh, a little while and uh, we'll need to add more of them. And the more of these you have, the longer you can keep your facility running with no power. So this is only kicking in because we are not providing enough power. And this power grid is completely unconnected from this power grid. And we can connect them together with a wire if we want to, but then we'll mess up our graphs and experiment. And here you can see this one is, uh, well, disconnected. In any case, this thing, they are connected, each pieces, and there is no like thing that's uh, like power capacity or um, such of the power lines. The power lines uh, transfer electricity with an infinite speed at an infinite capacity. If these are connected up in any way, shape or form to the machines, they are connected to, to the grid and you can't overload these wires. So it's kind of a little bit unrealistic to that. You can put like, I don't know, like thousand, one million megawatt through these, uh, th through like a single wire and it will not burn. Um, it's like infinite like that. Anyways, now you can see this thing, um, is not producing anything anymore because it's uh, saved up energy is uh, empty. So we should uh, put in a little bit of a fuel more and as soon as we do that instantly it starts burning the fuel and here you can see it starts producing and this thing for some reason uh, seems to not be charged by the uh, biomass burners. We need to use coal power plants or something like that to actually charge these because these adapt the power output to what's actually needed um, while the coal power plant just produces uh, them at full speed. So we're gonna check that. We're gonna go to the coal plant. But uh, I'm going to explain these numbers a little bit here. So the consumption... Let us take out... Oh, no power. Okay, throw in some more here. Uh, so we're going to explain these numbers here. The consumption is how much power our machines use right now. The production is how much um, power we produce right now. Uh, and as said, the biomass burners adapt production to consumption. And that's kind of weird. It's uh, the only machine that does that. If you look at this graph for the main line, you can see that the consumption is 1,300 megawatts and the production is 1,800 megawatts. And that is because our coal power plants produces this amount of power and it wastes the rest. And if we could charge some of these, uh, we would actually uh, charge the excess power into them. Uh, so we're just going to go into power, build a little power storage, connect that up to this main line. And you can see here, this one is now getting charged. It will take a full hour to charge this thing. Um, so it's kind of charging slow, but you can see it's on 50%. It's trying to charge up there. Uh, and now the consumption is like this, the production is like this, uh, excess is wasted, the, uh, the, the power things, uh, the, the power storages, um, are they called power storage? Yes, they were only called power storages. Uh, they don't actually charge very fast. I think it's an hour, no matter what you do. Um, so they are not going to sink down your system in any way. And it doesn't matter if you have too much uh, excess power. Just if you have a little bit of excess power, you can charge them. So it's worth uh, keeping some around, I will tell you that. Now, the capacity, you might wonder, what is the capacity? The capacity is how much power we can produce if every power generation facility is running at max. And you might remember I have some biomass burners uh, stocked up as uh, batteries with full with solid biofuel. 
if it's needed, they will kick in and they are part of this capacity. So they're like my organic little battery. Uh, the max consumption is how much all of your um, like parts producing or power consuming factories would like take if all of them were running at 100% all of the time, like the maximum sum of uh, like all, all the demand of all the buildings on the grid, how much they can consume. A lot of the time, max consumption is actually more than the capacity. And that's not good, but it's okay. As long as the consumption is lower than the production, you're fine. All right, that's kind of the numbers you'll need to look at. Um, I hope it's been decently clear, um, but, and this, this thing kicks in if it's needed. We can connect this up, by the way. We can connect it up to that, actually. You can see it's getting charged up. Now this thing is actually part of the main power grid. Here we can see a little production drop. Something happened here. Probably a coal power plant or whatever didn't get enough uh, uh, coal there for a second. Who knows? Uh, about that, we should be going there. I'm going to disconnect this line, this infinitely strong connecting line. You can see we charged this up in the meantime. And it will now actually provide this facility that has no fuel in here. Uh, it will provide power for this for three minutes only. With only charging it for like a second. We charged it so... We just charged it a few seconds. Oh no. And it's already such powerful. God damn. Now I dropped down here and that wasn't very smart. Oh and just like... <laughs> sorry if you feel that, that I have been repeating myself a little bit too much in this video. Well... I'm sorry, I'm aware about that, uh, and that is because I thought that everyone understood power, and I got an, I got them like three suggestions on a video on how to explain power properly, uh, and I understand that, uh, I don't know, I just had an electrical interest, so it's not hard for me to understand, but a lot of people find it really hard, so I'm just trying to be as clear as possible to like make sure that no one misses anything because all these megawatts and whatever might be new to you. And uh, you, you know the unit watt, it's like uh, how much power you basically use, it's um, uh, usage rate, basically watts, and megawatts is of course a lot of them. And that's, the, that's like the, the speed of power, or if you so would say, the speed of consumption or uh, production. Uh, so if you wonder what the watt is, it's basically the speed of production slash consumption. Uh, and in this game, it's a little bit different. Like the power is uh, instantly transferred between these poles, and um, if they're connected up, and that's cool and all, but that's how it works. So uh, we have a video covering extensively how to set up exactly this power plant. So check that out if you want to know how to. But basically, this thing takes power, uh, and it outputs water, and the water is then inserted into uh, these tubes. And we draw these coal here from mines and we push them into the buildings um, that produce the power, which is the coal generator. So we can go into this factory because it's the most neat of them. And here we have a coal generator and you can see here uh, it produces 75 megawatts. So not a lot, not a little, but um, it's all nice. It's perfectly balanced set up. You can see it's uh, provided with coal. Uh, very easily like that um, and if your machines are are not getting enough coal or enough water they will look a little bit weird so we can steal some coal from this uh, facility here and just throw some away <laughs> I have like a storage to prevent this kind of thing like a temporary loss so I'll need to work a little bit and here you can see it has no fuel and now you can see a little dent here in the capacity and the production. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that. <laughs> it's just that. So if, if your machines are going up and down, they probably need more water or more, uh, more coal or something like that. And that's basically how it works. Um, I hope I've explained everything enough now. Oh, and these, this is just the uh, wall mounts. And there's a little trick too. You can see the wall mount here. It costs 
double but it also has double the outputs so if you have a double you can connect each side to each other and you basically have out outputs eight outputs uh, the pole mark one and mark two they're not like better slash worse in any way it won't make your network more efficient the only thing they differ is that number of connection the mark one has four the mark two has seven and that's basically that uh, if you're not connected to the main line, well, then you're not, you, you don't have any connection and then you can't use it. Uh, you can use railways and uh, railroad stations, so you can actually just use your railway as uh, a means of transferring power. When we are unlock railways later, because you might know there are trains in the game, you don't need to draw a power line along with your uh, rail. You can just use the railway as a power. And these don't have the output for stuff, so I don't know why, but that's how it is. Um, let me just go down here and just have a little quick rundown what we kind of explained this thing. Uh, so, if we go to the miner here, all smelters, machines, pumps, uh, constructors, whatever, they all have some kind of power requirement. This one requires 12 megawatts. It's a Mark II miner. Um, and if it won't get that power, it won't work. Um, other things, they are producing power, like the coal generation plants. Um, we can use the storage modules to store power uh, for later use, if we don't produce enough in a later stage of the game. Uh, so, the consumption is how much megawatts are you using right now? What is the like speed of consumption, if you so will? Then we have the production, how much power are you producing right now? And the capacity is how much power can you produce if all your biomass burners and all that were just outputting uh, all along, all the time. And the max consumption is if everything was running at like, if all the demand of all your construction units was uh, demanding the <laughs> power, uh, you would take this, uh, well, this amount of megawatts. And if your network goes up and down and is jacked like that, try to get some awesome sinks and just adapt. Uh, and of course, do not, deny, do not rely on the power storages. Try to match your output, um, the power production, so it's more than the consumption uh, all the time. So I actually decently had to build this little bit thing off camera. It's just the same thing. It's, it's basically a repeat of what we did over there. It's the same facility. So I didn't, I haven't put it in a like video because we already checked this out. But it's basically the optimal setup for coal power plants, which uh, we did cover in that video. So I had to increase my power facility with one more big power factory with eight coal uh, power plants in order to actually provide for my factory because I was running on the power storages. And it's uh, not wrong to do to be running on your power storages. You should just be aware that uh, you shouldn't do that all the time. And you should try to keep your stuff running without needing them. But it's good to have them around if you mess up. And leave your biomass burner power plant intact. Fill it up with solid biofuel. And you will thank your yourself because... Um, they will be uh, useful in a time of need and you can save uh, you can give yourself an hour uh, and not have to listen to the like power go down and it, if the power go down it's uh, it's uh, it's kind of annoying and that's that's actually maybe i should just show you a little bit here can't afford are you kidding me okay well, let's go back all right so there we are let's remove this thing here and I'm going to set this up in a weird way. So we're going to underclock this thing so it only produces... Well, we can actually insert some. And this thing is now making stuff. We require 13 megawatts, so we're going to underclock this. And there we have it. That's the sound. And when the sound happens, you might want to try and restart it. And it's annoying like this. And... ah basically you need to add more power and you might need to have a good bit more because there is a starting spike usually when you start the machines when everything kicks in and it gets a little jank like that so sometimes you need to actually trigger it several times but if you can't start it in five tries with a lever 
you definitely have to add more power uh, production and it can also probably be a good idea to add one of these at power storage. All right, so I hope that this has been useful for you and sorry if I have been repeating myself a little bit. I just want to make sure that after this little video, absolutely everyone understands how power works in detail. So you don't have to be confused anymore about those weird numbers and you can just go to your uh, close power pole, closest power pole, check the numbers and just understand what's going on there. So yeah. Hope it was useful. See you next time. This is your host, Jim Odesme, and we're gonna be back next week with another satisfactory tutorial. Please post your comments what you thought about this and some ideas on some future videos you'll need. This is your host, Jim Odesme, we're signing out.